Hi there and welcome to a new video in which we are going to be talking about ChatGPT and Go.ai and ChatGPT. In this case, I want to specifically talk about how to design a game, how to define game ideas, game mechanics, all that, thanks to ChatGPT. I am a member of the Plus subscription, but you can do this with the free version as well. So anybody can follow along with this and take advantage of all the amazing advantages that this uh, AI tool provides. You're going to be saving a lot of time. You're going to be able to create better games. So let's get started right away because it's something that I have been using for my own projects. So right now, okay, I am preparing or maybe you have seen uh, my new Godot course. And to come up with these ideas, I created a new project called Udemy. And well, basically here is uh, the specific chat for this course. Okay, it, it's been quite long because I've done literally everything here. Um, so I want to show you the very beginning, okay, because here is the important thing. So, first of all, in this project, I'm going to discuss Udemy courses, but once again, this is the same thing uh, for discussing just Godot projects, okay? Uh, so, first of all, I was training it, okay, giving it my, my Udemy profile. Uh, I want to create a brand new course, all that. Um, so, first, we started discussing some types as well. Um, so, once again, more stuff over here. And here is where the magic starts to happen. I told GPT, proposed three quick games to be created for the course. Remember, they must be short as the course will last for two or four hours. So he started directly, let's not say creating a game design document, but giving me the overview. So catch the following objects and a brief description, avoid the enemies, description, tiny top-down shooter, and a description. And the good thing is that you can iterate on it. So for example, I really liked idea one, but then I spotted that ideas two and three were very similar. So I basically told GPT, okay, give me 10 more ideas so that I can choose. And basically, I got here a huge list of game ideas, okay, of concepts. And with all this, what you can do is kind of tell GPT, okay, merge these, I don't know, seven and eight, okay, ideas that I liked and create something completely different, okay? Uh, so you can really iterate a lot on all of this, okay? And it's basically, uh, you can think of ChatGPT as an unlimited database because you can always tell ChatGPT, okay, give me 10 more, give me 15 more, merge this, do this. It's amazing the power that this has. So first, I, I told GPT, okay, I liked, and well, in this case, the, the first game idea, catch the falling obstacles, and also the second idea, jump the gaps. Based on this, once again, another 10. I like this too, so give me something that goes uh, to this direction that is kind of similar to this. So once again, 10 more short game ideas, brief overview. Okay, and there I got it. I, I just told here ChatGPT, okay, I will continue with this. Okay, so here I've got the three games that I wanted to create. How can you reflect this on, on your end? You can start a new chat, tell ChatGPT, okay, I want to create a game. It, it really depends on if you already have something, if you already have some information, what you can do is to copy and paste that information and tell ChatGPT, oh, I have this information. Can you add this X or Y? Or can we discuss about X, Y, or Z? Um, what do you think would be better to include in the game? X, Y, Z, whatever it is, okay? It's like your personal assistant, okay? mostly for free or for just $20 a month if you have the plus subscription as I do. So once again, super amazing. So I just told JGPT, okay, I'm going with this idea. So just for it to know where I'm going. And well, from now on here, I have a script, a script of the introductions and more stuff, but here it was um, how I was able to mostly design completely three games and to design three game ideas in a matter of, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And the good thing is, is that then these ideas, I actually made them a reality with as with as little information as ChatGPT gave me. So catch the falling obstacles, the, the, the falling objects, I have it over here, okay? And this is the game that basically created, well, I, that I created with the help of ChatGPT. So player controls the basket, moving left, right to catch falling items, lose a life if you miss, uh, try to reach a score goal or something like that. So this is how I put this into reality. So we have the basket. You move around and you uh, collect some coins or hamburgers or whatever it is. You have three lives. And if you do not co collect any of these foods, as you can see, you start losing some lives. Okay. So there you see how I started making this a reality. I will just show you the second game so that you can also see it. So for example, the second game was jump the gaps. Player order moves right, clicks or presses space to jump over gaps. Teaches the perform movement, collisions, and the scrolling backgrounds, for example. So then I actually made this a reality. So jump the gaps. And once again, with just those phrases, those sentences, I was able to create something. Once again, remember, this was just for a Udemy course. And of course, this is not probably a game that you would want to sell or whatever it is. 
but it really made my process way simpler because sometimes when I want to create a game for my own courses, I really spend a lot of time researching what has already been done, what could look uh, cool, whatever it is. And it's really something that takes time, okay? But here in ChatGPT, in a matter of a few minutes, I was able to sort it out and actually focus on what matters, creating a good game that looks good, that feels good, that has stuff that it's important for a student to learn. So it's basically that. So what happens if we actually want to create something bigger or more polished? Because here, what I just wanted was, a, first of all, a pretty simple project, something uh, straight to a point. As you can see, each game has a description of just two sentences. For me, that was enough for what I need to do. So what if we wanted to create something bigger? So let's actually do it here live with you. So we'll start a brand new chat. Once again, here what we have to know is that in ChatGPT Plus, okay, that as you can see, it's only $20. Well, only $20 a month. I know for some people, this could be a lot of money. And even for me, it is like a reasonable investment. But for so many uh, good things that it provides, it's really something that is worth it. Okay. I already talked about ChatGPT Plus in other videos. That's why I'm not digging a lot deeper. But the main thing, at least for, for this video in specific, is that here you have models. Okay. So what happens is that the, the best model and the one that actually works. Uh, uh, at least right now, it's GPT-40. So what happens is that you also have versions uh, 03, 04 mini, okay? And what happens is that if you are not, okay, in uh, the Plus uh, subscription, you have a limited usage of 40, okay? And when you don't, when you have like no more credits or of 40, okay, what happens is that you're automatically switched back to a way older and way worse model that is sometimes is 04 mini, sometimes is 03. Well, we don't really <laughs> know sometimes what model ChatGPT is using. But the thing is that in the free model, in the free ChatGPT, sorry, uh, you may have seen that uh, pop up that you have here. Oh, you've reached the limit of usage of ChatGPT 40. Oh, now we are switching back to X model. And when that happens, ChatGPT automatically becomes uh, completely. Um, not clever, okay? You can't really use it a lot. Uh, so once again, this is just something you have to balance on your end to see if it is worth it or not. So let's try to get something a little bit more interesting. And let's just start from scratch. Let's say I want to create a video game. So let's say something like this, so pretty generic. Of course, the idea would be that you, on your own, ChatGPT cannot think uh, on, on your behalf. So you first you have to think on your own uh understand what you want to create and then you can discuss some stuff with chat gpt so it, it can of course help in the ideation process and the brainstorm process and all that but it's gonna work way better if you already tell chat gpt hey um i have this game idea i and and you tell it the problems that you're facing okay i don't know if this is going to be balanced i don't know how to make it more complex or just what do you think of this game idea what could i add what should i remove from it so all that, but do not start from a complete blank page. That would be my advice. Because here, well, yes, you, we have lots of ideas. I told GPT, oh, I don't have that much experience. I still want to create something interesting. So of course we have a lot of options, okay? Uh, GPT cannot think for you. It can help you think, but it will not think for you. So here we have some popular genres that are not that complicated to create, so that's cool. For example, an endless runner, idle clicker, an hyper casual games, simple action game, top-down arcade shooter, a swipe drag game. So, for example, right now, you may know that hyper casual games and hybrid casual games are on its peak. These games that you see on ads everywhere. So, let's say that uh, we want to continue with this. So, what we can basically do is copy and paste this, literally, with Control c Control b okay? And basically, like this, you start getting lots of ideas. As I believe already mentioned, what you have to think of these kind of AIs is that they are an endless and unlimited source of data and ideas. We as humans may at some point in our in our life run out of ideas of creativity, but you will always be able to judge between, okay, I didn't like your ideas. Give me 10 more, 15 more, 100 more. And it's going to be able to give you. So here we have some ideas that could be interesting. So for example, here, this one, merge slider, actually pretty interesting. Slide number tiles like in 2048, but instead of merging identical numbers as you do in 2048, you merge complementary colors. Red plus blue equals purple. So pretty interesting. It could work. And it even tells you, okay, try to create target colors. For example, made green to score points. So pretty interesting, right? 
Uh, and of course you can tell here, okay, how can I, how could I have it to the 3D environment? How can the player win? How can the player lose? Uh, so all that. So what I basically do is something super generic, but just for you to understand the true power of this tool. Uh, let me just super quick and easy. Let me paste this and create a whole GDD. Give it to me in PDF format. Take your time. Okay, we could even go more advanced and select a specific model for this. Uh, but I believe that with this one, we're going to go just find this model works flawlessly. Um, so let's do it like this. It's going to take some time, but you can still see what it's doing. So here we have it. Okay, so we can open it up. Okay, so here we have it's just amazing. We even have tools to adjust the length. So for example, we can add emojis, words, sections, lists. So this is amazing. Add final Polish, uh, reading level. So keep current reading level, middle school, kindergarten, college, graduate school. So basically the tone of the writing, uh, length. Okay. Uh, so it is literally amazing. Okay. You can of course edit any of these things. Okay. And whenever you want, you can add the final Polish if you wanted to add something, but I don't think it was necessary, at least in this case, as you can see, it's super complete. Okay, and of course you can pay a copy and paste this in a Word document and save it. And what I will just tell here is I do want a nice, a nice style PDF, for example, to make it look cool. And let's give it a second. I don't really remember if this version can give it to me like directly a PDF to download, but let's give it a second. Oh yes, but it can. So it really blows away my mind. Um, so we can download it. So let's actually do it here and let's open it up. And as you can see, in a matter of seconds, we do have our GDD. What is weird is that maybe the information, we do have it, okay? But I actually told it to a nice style PDF with headers, dividers, maybe small icons. And uh, I don't know, it didn't uh, do that, but let's sell it, okay? So here, for example, we have like one with some headings. So, so this could perfectly work if you want something more, maybe more minimalistic. Uh, and it's also generating a new one with more decorative, okay? And it should have like more style, more colors, more something. It should. So here, well, it has more things. Unfortunately, I was not able to make it work to kind of add, uh, add it like this because I really like this format. But what we could technically do is I could, we could just, oh, we can download it actually over here. So PDF. So with this, we should be able to have it. And as you can see here, we kind of have it. It's maybe a little bit too small, some stuff, but it's way better. Uh, but what we can actually do, the best thing would be to copy it, open up a new Word document, for example, or Google Docs or whatever you want. I will paste the information and here it is. So now I can edit it as I want. So I can make stuff bigger, smaller, change the font, whatever I want to do. And once again, how much time did I spend in this? Five minutes, okay? And we already have a completely defined game idea. So I don't know, this really blows away my mind. Of course, it's not something that will replace game designers or, or anything like that, but it's definitely a copilot. It is definitely a tool that will help us save some time and uh, actually create better stuff. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below.